Hi. Trying to get a few more videos out than one a week. So uh, this is the second one for this week. And I wanted to do a video for a while. I had done what I used to have an old channel and I had done a video on this before, but I did it with like a phone camera. So the audio was really bad. The video quality was pretty poor, um, but it did get quite a few views and quite a bit of interest and comments. That channel's closed now, so I figured I might as well go back and do a decent review on this with a, a good bit of kit, so we've got some decent quality audio and video. So I want to take a look at the Workshop Ken Onion Edition Sharpener. Uh, most of you guys will have heard of it. Uh, some of you may have one, some of you may be considering getting one and I just want to run through how I use it there are a few nuanced questions with these you know how hard do you press down and um, how do you ensure your your angles are, are good it's it's in a bit of a uh, filthy condition because it gets used a lot so that's a, a pretty good sign that it's a decent bit of kit I'm really pleased with it I've tried loads and loads of different things for sharpening in the past. I've gone through like Lansky uh, systems, um, various different stones, various different files. And the bottom line is they all work. You know, you can get them all to work. A lot of those systems, um, you know, the less automated they are, the more skills required at your end. And finally, I got this system. Uh, which I can probably sharpen the knife on this in five or ten minutes depending on the state of the knife and the other good thing about this is you can actually reprofile a knife or if I've had a knife with a snapped tip before and on those old systems you know if you're using stones and stuff forget that you, you, you'd be months trying to reprofile a knife a couple of knives I've been carrying a lot in my pocket recently I've got the uh, Twisted Assisty Junzi and the QSP Penguin. Uh, I've been using them a lot for breaking down boxes and you know various different bits of work. And they've just become a bit dull, so they need a touch up. So we'll, we'll touch both of them up on here and then I'll just go through how I would do that and how I would do a knife that was really in need of uh, more work. You know, it had been severely blunted, it had nicks taken out of it or whatever. We'll go through how I would do that as well. So I hope you enjoy. We'll go to a top down and then we'll take a, a good look at this thing in action. The workshop. Okay, so we've got our workshop on the bench, ready to go. We've got a couple of knives here. We've got the QSP Penguin. You guys have probably seen that before, done a review on that one before. Great little knife, super cheap. And then another knife we reviewed, the Twisted Assisted Junzi, which is a nice little slip joint. Great for EDC in a lot of different countries because it doesn't lock, sub three inch blade. So you can see here, this is a grinding belt basically and it's held on just from spring tension so you can push that in take a belt off no problem at all they're very quick to take off we'll just take this one off if you want just so I can demonstrate that so belt comes straight off and then you can see there really awkward to do on here in front of the camera because we're trying to reach around the tripod and such but basically we're back on now it's got a trigger control here which will fire the belt and you've also got speed control here you can see the plus and the minus and then it's got a locking function so you can press this 
to lock that down or you can just run it on the trigger so I can either run the trigger with my finger or if I press that trigger down and hold the lock it'll just run on its own and then we can vary the speed just by turning that dial and back off again now it comes with various different belts you've got a really coarse which you would only use for reprofiling a blade or if the blade was really in a bad state and that you can see I don't know if you can see a, a close-up on there but it's really really rough and I think that is a P120 grit so very very rough indeed you wouldn't want to do that to any sort of blade that's in pretty good shape that's the next one again very coarse I would not again use that on any sort of blade that was in good shape too coarse I'm not quite sure on the grit value of that one, but again, very coarse. So, put that to the side. This is a medium belt. And that's where I normally start to get a blade back into shape using that medium. Then we've got fine. And sometimes if you just want to retouch, a fine is no problem at all. A fine is fine. And then on here, we've got a strop, which really doesn't have much grit on it. It's virtually smooth. It's almost like a leather feel. And that could be fine. You know, if, you're, if your blade just needs a little touch, then you're good to go. So on these, we'll stick the fine on there. So hopefully get it on a bit quicker this time. It's a two-handed operation really. You can actually press that in and if you angle that down, which I should have done in the first place, you can just put the blade on and turn that round and you're back. Now, but you might find this sits off centre and you can use this wheel here to actually change the centre in. So you see how that's bringing him across and you want him just in the middle there, like so. So sometimes you'll find when you change your belt, the belt wants to sit off to one side and that can be tweaked there. The other important thing to note is if you loosen this part up here, then you can actually modify the angle. You modify that just by moving this up and down and you can see the angle. Let's just pop that in. You can see the angle changing there so normally go at about 17 so we call that good and then we just tighten him up once he's tight that's not moving and then we can pop that back into place Give him a fire, make sure he's still running straight. Give him a tweak. And there we go, we're ready to go. Now, on here you can see this flat platter. And that is, the idea of that is to give you a flat plane on which you can assess whether or not you're coming up here 
flat because if you just come up here at random angles you're changing the angle of the the bevel as you sharpen so every time I go down you can come up sharpen come back down come up sharpen and I just press hard enough with you know it just needs one finger and just enough just so you can draw it across and feel it sharpening you don't want to be really pressing down on it because you're going to change the angle as you press more and more you press into that belt and as the belt presses in which you can see here you know we're now changing the angle quite dramatically so we don't want to do that we just want to press enough to get the belt working on the blade so I'll show you this is not sharp enough at the moment it's not taking any hair off my arm don't do that at home by the way in case you're gonna cut yourself so let's get this running it's gonna be a bit noisy but we'll get it running and we we'll just see what this first belt does in terms of getting the blade nice and sharp for us and then we'll try and strop it if it doesn't work we'll go down to a medium but this this should be good He's starting to take a little bit of hair off. So now we've got a good edge on our medium belt on the stropping belt here and we can put on a bit more pressure on this one because unlike these other belts the stropping belt is not putting any um, it's not cutting away material it's just polishing it off Now we've got a really nice polished edge, you can see on there. And you can see that is shaving sharp. Perfect. And that's D2 still. D2 is relatively easy to sharpen. Some of the super stills will take longer. You might have to go down to you know a coarser belt and then work up. But that is D2. This one's D2 as well. Some heat treats on D2 make specific knives harder to sharpen than others. So we'll just take this out again. Put in a fine belt here. Reset. Central. 
slightly different blade shape now. I'm just turning him round. One thing to be wary of is don't press the tip of the blade onto it. I just avoid the tip going on there at all, to be honest. And this is one of the reasons blades have that little sharpening coil so that you can actually get right to the edge of the blade. Another thing to be wary of is when you're putting this down straight, because this has got a little bit of a uh, change in angle there, you can see. I can put it down at this angle or that angle, so I'm going to make sure it's at a flat angle. So I'm using the angle on the back here, which you know is flat, unlike this one, which has an angle in itself. Here we've got a right angle for the spine, so I'm going to use that as my angle to introduce the blade. Make sure it's the same every time. And one of the points to note on here is, turn this off a second. As I'm sharpening, I can actually see a little burr forming. And that, that is basically where I've reached. The two angles are now perfectly aligned together as I'm sharpening, and it's just shaving off a tiny bit of metal off the outside edge. And that's what you want. You want those two angles to perfectly meet so that you you get that burr forming across. Once you see that burr, we'll give it another couple of goes, but once you see that burr, you know you're about as good as you can get with that specific belt. And the only thing you can do then is go finer. You can see again, we're shaving sharp. Nearly got a bald arm now, but he is razor sharp. And you can see, beautiful edge on there. So, as you can see, we've done two knives, nice and quick. The workshop is an excellent, excellent piece of kit. The basic model comes with a attachment that sits here. This can be removed just by unscrewing this. This whole piece comes away. And then there is another attachment. The reason I don't use the other attachment, and it, it would be great if I just had kitchen knives because it's an angular attachment that the knives basically sit in this sort of V shape and then you draw them across. But for a lot of outdoor knives, because of the way the blades are shaped and profiled, it's just not as easy to use. It wouldn't be acceptable for some of the, um, the steeper angles on some of the blades and some of the steep swedges and stuff like that. It, it just doesn't work very well. But if you're doing kitchen knives, and, and just normal straight knives, then it's absolutely ideal because it's easier. But for most people that are into EDC and have got a variety of knives, they're gonna find that this um, grinding attachment, the Ken Onion grinding attachment is an absolute must. I've also done uh, axes, hatchets, all kinds of sharp stuff on there. I've done straight edge razors. Um, so th they'll really handle 
anything because of the nature of it. It's, it's like a mini um, workshop grinding belt, you know, and you just wouldn't be able to do any of those other things in a standard attachment. I've even done uh, my chisels on here. They actually make a um, specialist attachment for chisels. So if you're doing that, take a look at the workshop website and uh, looks actually a really cool piece of kit that I'm gonna have to get hold of. I'll probably make a video on that at a later date. Guys, I hope you've got something out of that. I'll put a link to the workshop up. It's done a great job on these knives and I'll catch you next time.